Uh, let's start. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Yuichiro Tachibana. In this five minutes talk, I'm going to talk about a very great Python framework for rapid web app development named Streamlit. I think there are some talks in this Python JP about this framework. Anyway, and in addition to that, I'm going to talk about Streamlit Web RTC uh, library. It is extension of Streamlit, uh, which I'm developing now. First of all, I'm going to show you this demo application. And note that uh, this app is hosted on the public cloud, uh, accessible from the entire world, from uh, through this public publicly available URL. And in addition to that, uh, and as you may see now, this application is now uh, consuming input real-time video stream from my web camera equipped to my local host, and is simultaneously. Uh, applying to, oh, sorry, yes, applying to, uh, applying object detection process up to this, it frames frame by frame, and is also now outputting the result here in real time and also outputting the frames, output frames with bounding boxes rendered in real time. In addition to that, uh, thanks to uh, Streamlit's interactive web frame, web components like slider here, uh, users can change uh, model parameters like threshold interactively, even during execution at runtime. Okay, I think uh, what's surprising here is that this, um, this demo is hosted on the public cloud, so it is easily easily uh, shared to uh, users, and users can access to this app through web browsers any external dependencies. So next, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create such web based applications on Streamlit, uh, on top of Streamlit. First, I'm launching Streamlit process with this command Streamlit run app.py. Now Streamlit is serving web app without any content right now here because uh, this app.py is empty. So I'm gonna add just two lines of code like here um, to import Streamlit and call st.title. Now Streamlit is rendering a relevant HTML component here. Uh, this is how developers can create uh, web-based apps through Streamlit, very easy. So now I'm gonna add just more lines of code importing Streamlit WebRTC library and its WebRTC streamer component and calling it here. Now we now have a real-time media processing very basic version of media uh, real-time streaming component here. Uh, it's just consuming input com uh, video and audio stream and output the raw frames without any uh, processing. So now I'm gonna add this uh, class definition including and uh, importing OpenCV. And this class definition has a callback method which receives a input frame and returns a output frame. Inside uh, this callback, there is a single lines of code, which line of code of OpenCV filter. This is a very simple version of, well, anyway. And I also pass this class to WebRT streamer component. Then we now have injected this image processing code into our this uh, real-time web-based uh, video app on top of Streamlit. I think this is very uh, convenient for our developers or researchers that who want to create real-time demo shareable their shareable to you their you colleagues or users because it is as may you already imagined any arbitrary kinds of image processing code can be injected into this uh, callback so people can easily create any kind of application, including uh, object detection, like the previous uh, example. So I'm gonna show you other examples from this point. So this is a real-time speech to text app, which is converting my, my audio voice, voice audio stream into text in real time, which shows that Streamlit WebRTC can handle not only video stream, but also audio streams. And this example is about uh, st style transfer. And as we have seen before, uh, thanks to Streamlit interactivity, uh, users can change the model type or model parameters very interactively at runtime. Okay, now we are reaching the end, so uh, wrapping up. Please check out Streamlit 
and streams we have about to see. And I'm open to any question or discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.